Bonjour mes amis, I hope that you are well. Today is Friday, so I thought I'd try to share another uh, tale of, or fable of uh, Monsieur La Fontaine. So I am Fontaine La Renard, and I wish to share La Renard and Le Raisin, or the fox and the grapes. But before I do, I want to show you, uh, make you aware of this particular picture, and uh, it is a beautiful painting of the fox reaching for the grapes. And what you find very, uh, very nice is the mice underneath were picking up the uh, the fallen grapes. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it's 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 just it's just a very striking photo uh, painting. I mean, unfortunately, I cannot give credit to it because the signature on the bottom is just not quite readable enough. It uh, was like it looked like it looks like a, a Terry somebody, but unfortunately, I cannot. I cannot, cannot read it, and I try to find it. Uh, I have it on my uh, on my friend's computer. I tried to find it and I couldn't. Uh, so I don't know. I just don't know who to credit it to. But nevertheless, rem remember that it is not mine. This is far above my capacity for for layout. But at least I can read something. So, with that, I would like to share Le Renard et les raisons, and. Um, and talk just a little bit about the moral of it first. The, of course, it is one of those, uh, like with most fables, you always have a moral to it. And sort of the moral of it is that it's easier to complain about something than it is to actually put the work in and the effort to try to do it. So as you'll find out in the, uh, as we continue reading in the poem. But first, I will offer the, as we've done before, I will offer the poem in French, and then I will read uh, a translation, and then I will let French have the last word and read it again. So, let us begin with the first reading, Le Renard et les Raisins, The Fox and the Grapes. Certains renards gascons, d'autres disant normands, n'auront presque de femmes, vie ou autre, d'une treille, Des raisins meurent apparemment, et couverts d'une peau vermeille. Les galants, le galant, ont eu fait volontiers un repas, mais comme ils n'y pouvaient, mais comme ils n'y pouvaient point attendre, ils sont trop verts, dit-elle, et bon pour des goujats. Fait-il pas mieux que de se plaindre? So that was our first reading, and I'll read a translation from a from somebody by the name of Micheline Walker, and I got this got this from a blog from MichelineWalker.com, and so the translation goes like this. And again, always remember that no translation, particularly with poetry, is perfect. It never will be, because so much of the so much of the meaning is held within. The context of the language and the time and and even the heart and mind of the person writing it. So, you know. But I think this is a pretty good in faith effort at uh, at a good translation. So, well done to uh, to Micheline Walker. Thank you for this translation. If you ever see this, so you have my appreciation. So I will read it as such. A fox, almost with hunger dying, some grapes on a trellis spying. To all appearance ripe, clad in their tempting russet skin, most gladly would have eat them. But since he could not get them, so far above his reach, the vine, they are sour, he said. Such grapes as these, the dogs may eat them if they please. Did he not better than to whine? So there, of course, is the, is the more that it's easier to complain about things than to actually, oops, than to actually fix them. Oh, I've not done that at all. Anyway, so allow me to have uh, Monsieur Fontaine to have the last word, and and uh, yes, les renards et les raisons. Certains renards gascons. D'autres disent non, non, n'auront presque des femmes, 
vie en haute d'une traille, des raisins mûrs apparemment, et couverts d'une peau en vermeille. Le galon, en eux fait volontiers en repas, mais comme ils n'y pouvaient point atteindre, et si on trouvait, dit et bon pour des goujats, fit-il pas, oups, fit-il pas mieux que de se plaindre? My friends, this was The Fox and the Raisins by Jean de La Fontaine, and I wish you a most wonderful day. Au revoir et bisous.